Madam, this bill, though styled as the Please. 122nd Amendment to the Constitution, is in fact the 100th Amendment to India's Constitution. And in the matter of revenue and taxation, probably this is the most important amendment that has been ever taken up in, in the Constitution itself. Our current structure of indirect taxation empowers both the central and the state governments to levy different kinds of taxes. These taxes by the central government may be in forms of the excise duties, they may be in form of service tax, taxes uh, by the state government are VAT plus other multiplicity of taxes by the state government. Now the object of this constitution amendment is to bring about a certain amount of convergence between these taxes so that the taxation mechanism becomes extremely simple. But before I explain that, I would just uh, uh, point out uh, uh, a marginal point which was raised by Mr. Mehta with regard to the standing committee that the IGST was not a part of the 2011 bill. If Mr. Mehtab checks up, and he is very industrious, I'm sure he will check up, the IGST was a part of the 2011 bill, and on page 68 of the Standing Committee recommendation, the IGST has been specifically discussed as such. Madam, as far as the advantages of the GST structure is concerned, the difficulty being faced by the present uh, setup is that there is no uniformity of tax rates and structures across the states. And therefore, different taxation in different states prevents the seamless transfers of goods and services as far as the country is concerned. The second problem which has been noted with regard to the present uh, structure is that if different levies of taxation are made, we have the concept of tax being levied on tax itself. Therefore, if you have excise duty in the first instance being levied by the central government and subsequently a VAT, those uh, quantums of fresh taxes which are levied are also levied on the tax input which has already gone in. The result of which both goods and services can become costlier. Now the advantages that the GST constitutional amendment will bring about will be that it will simplify and harmonize the indirect tax regime as far as the whole country is concerned. It is expected to reduce the cost of production and inflation in the economy thereby making Indian trade and industry more competitive domestically as well as internationally. It is also expected that the introduction of GST will foster a common or a seamless Indian market and contribute significantly to the growth of the economy. GST will broaden the tax base and result in a better tax compliance due to a robust infrastructure, IT infrastructure. Due to this seamless transfer of input credit at one stage to another, in the chain of value addition, there is an inbuilt mechanism in the design of the GST that it would incentivize tax compliance, therefore evasion itself would become difficult. I mentioned, Madam, during the earlier part of the discussion today, that it has a checkered history. 2003 was when the Kelkar committee was appointed, when the NDA's first government led by Mr. Vajpayee was in power. Thereafter, the proposal to introduce a national level goods and services tax was first mooted by the finance minister, Mr. Chidambaram, in his budget speech of 2006-2007. Since it involved reforms, not only in the indirect taxes of the central government, but also in indirect taxes of the state government, it was necessary that the entire design structure for this taxation be prepared. Because by virtue of this uh, uh, by virtue of this uh, constitution amendment, ultimately the taxation design structure of the states will also change. Therefore, an empowered committee of state finance ministers was appointed, and this empowered committee, along with the, along with the, uh, uh, the parliamentary consensus, both have worked in tandem since then, as Mr. Mehta had very rightly pointed out uh, uh, in the morning today. Now, based on these inputs, 
this and various other working groups which were appointed, the constitution amendment was framed and in March 2011, the then finance minister, the Honorable Sri Pranab Mukherjee introduced the constitution amendment in parliament. This constitution amendment went to the standing committee and the standing committee almost for more than two years deliberated on it for two and a half years and in August 2013, the standing committee gave its detailed recommendation as far as the GST structure was concerned. Now, based on this structure, we went back, re-altered the bill, and this re-alteration took place when UPA 2 was in power. So, this went back to the empowered committee of the state finance ministers. Now, the empowered committee of the state finance ministers had two doubts in mind. The first doubt was that there are some states which are the manufacturing states. GST is a destination tax. The entire tax which is collected at the state level, the goods may be produced in one state, sold in another state, traded in another state, the tax advantage of that will go to the consuming state itself. Therefore, the consuming states all felt that they would be beneficiaries in the first instance, but the manufacturing states had some doubts that they could lose out. And therefore, when Mr. Huda in the morning mentioned that Gujarat had some reservations, he was absolutely right. Gujarat had reservations because Gujarat as a manufacturing state, Maharashtra as a manufacturing state, Tamil Nadu as a manufacturing state. One minute, sir. Because of that only, we are opposing the GST bill. That is why when other members are referring this, it has to be better to refer to the standing committee. That is what I stand. Because you are also raising the issues now, there are differences of opinion. Even that some states are uh, having objection on that. Therefore, I say new bill, please refer to the standing committee, what let I am insisting. Let, let me just explain. Therefore, the only changes that we brought, when the, when the manufacturing states had reservations, so a consensus had to be arrived at. So the empowered committee of the state chief minister, finance ministers again met. They not only met, they had to go back to their states. And every state, and I say this without fear of contradiction, every state has given its concurrence to those proposals. And the change that was made was that can we, for a period of two years, on IGST, have an additional levy of 1%? This was suggested by Gujarat, this was suggested by Maharashtra, because these were the consuming states and therefore this was a via media which every other state accepted. After every state accepted this, the only other question was, if any state stands to lose revenue, this won't happen because this was the fear of the unknown when the VAT came into existence. Therefore, there was some delay in the implementation of the VAT. When VAT was implemented, every state's revenue subsequently has gone up, nobody lost. So the central government then took upon itself that for the first five years, we will try in a particular tapering manner, underwrite the loss which may be caused to the states. And the underwriting procedure is that for the first three years, 100% of the loss, if any state suffers, will be compensated by us. In the fourth year, 75% will be compensated by us. In the fifth state, 50% will be compensated with us. This became a point of consensus between all states. And therefore, based on this, the general consensus which emerged between the standing committee recommendations and the empowered committee of the state chief ministers was that as far as central taxes are concerned, the central taxes in terms of excise duty, additional excise duty, service tax, additional customs duty, etc. will all be subsumed. Now, service tax entirely is payable to the state center. As of today, the states don't get it. In this changed design, the states will also be entitled to a part of that service tax. Therefore, this will necessarily push up the revenue. The anticipation is, besides service tax, Besides easier compliance, besides the ease of doing business in India, expansion of the volumes itself, the trade itself will grow, and therefore this taxation of the states will not be lost in any manner. But in Already, government has written a letter to you. We are losing 10,000 crores per year because of this just introduction. 
you have said about Maharashtra, Kuchrav, Tamil Nadu is gone objecting this because we are losing 10,000 crores. That, that, how you are going to compensate that? That is one to you know. That's exactly what I have explained. You see, besides the structure benefiting every state, including Tamil Nadu, and I have explained to the leaders of your party also that in the first instance, better compliance takes care of it. In the second instance, there are important centers. Tamil Nadu also gives a lot of service tax. Tamil Nadu government today does not get any benefit of that service tax. Benefit of the service tax after GST will also be available to Tamil Nadu. So that's an additional benefit you will get. If still after that, there is any dip in revenue during the transient stage of any stage, for the first five years we have undertaken as a central government to write it off. That is a part of the constitution amendment itself. That is how these concerns of the states were taken into consideration. You see, after, after five years, let me assure you, after five years, this was the sole question raised when VAT came into existence. What if the states will lose revenue? For a single year, not a single state lost revenue. Every state's revenue increased. Therefore, please don't have this fear that any state is going to... After all, every state, including your finance minister, he was present even day before yesterday when he came and met the, us in the Empowered Committee meeting. There is a presentation he has also made in that. Therefore, as far as the state taxes are concerned, they will also be subsumed. Now, in the structure of the GST, we will follow the following procedure. There will be the central GST, there will be the state GST, there will be the interstate GST, the IGST, integrated GST as we call it. Now, after this, what are the rates at which it will be revenue? The experts will decide a revenue neutral rate, but eventually the rates will be decided by the GST council. Who will be the GST council? This is cooperative federalism in action. You have a greater veto. You have a greater veto. Do you realize you have a greater veto? The GST council structure, the GST council structure, which the standing committee has approved, which the empowered committee of chief ministers, finance ministers has approved. So it's not my structure. The structure is two-third of the voting right belongs to the states. One-third of the voting right belongs to the center. And therefore, as far as central and state taxes are concerned, it is this council which will decide where the states have a two-third majority. So this federalism leans in favor of the states. Every decision is to be taken by a 75% majority. And therefore, therefore, un therefore, the inbuilt consensus is, in terms of cooperative federalism, the center and the states will then have to work together. That is how India is run. Federalism does not mean trampling the rights of the state. Federalism does not mean India that is a union of state, the union ceases to exist. So it does not mean that the union doesn't have a say in the taxation structure. Whenever the union government wants to have a say, will have its way. No. Despite all, all, all states coming together, cannot withstand the union government's uh, position. If all states come together, if most states, for one, one minute, let me answer this. If some of the states come together, let's forget all. If some of the states come together, they can prevent the union from taking a decision. Do you accept that as a formula? Because states have two-third majority, and therefore, if even half of them come together, they have a veto. Therefore, the inbuilt council, and this is not my wisdom, this is not the wisdom of the present government. This is also the wisdom of the UPA government. This is the wisdom of all the 27 finance ministers taken together. This is the wisdom also of the standing committee, a unanimous recommendation of the standing committee, that the structure must be such that two-third of the power belongs to the states, one-third belongs to the center, and you need a three-fourth majority to approve a decision. That is the decision-making process. They've, that is how they've integrated the, 
the whole system of uh, the uh, uh, cooperative federalism in this taxation structure. I think many times, even Prime Minister said, due to cooperative federalism, 14 finance commission, already I, in budget speech I said, told, I, we are losing 6,000 crores per annum. You are not losing a rupee? No, no, we are, sir. As, you are know, you, is your state And also 10,000 crores GST. Nearly 16,000 crores it's Tamil Nadu is going to lose because of the GST and also please. your poverty federalism. No, that is what you are suffering, that you have to see. Sir, may I, may I also explain to you why you don't lose money? I said in the course of my reply to the budget speech, not a single state has come up and said I am willing to go back to the 13th Finance Commission. And the reason please, is, please, please. and the error in your calculation is the following. The UPA, unfortunately they walked out, they are not here, had a very interesting method of uh, budgetary presentation. And that was, the budget estimates were very high, the revised estimates were very low. So what you were spending and actually giving was much lower than what had been proposed in the budget. So when you calculate that amount, the budget estimates were nominal, the revised estimates were real. So compare it with the real money you got in the 14th Finance Commission, every state including Tamil Nadu is going to get much higher. But if you are going to compare it with the budget estimates of UPA or the 13th Finance Commission, which was a notional amount, never acted upon, the amounts never paid, then that fictional amount may be higher. But actually, the uh, actual amounts you got under 13th is much lesser than what every state will get under the 14th Finance Commission. I say that without fear of contradiction, and this applies to every state. Therefore, Madam, Yes. GST is going to lead to a win-win situation as far as the centre and the states is concerned. It's going to up India's GDP, it is going to up India's revenues, and therefore I commend the GST constitutional amendment to the Honourable House for its approval. Thank you.